What's up everyone? Welcome back to my channel. Today I am doing a Q&A video. I haven't done one of these since I think when I first got 1,000 subscribers a couple years ago. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I am doing my Q&A. And this one is actually kind of like in celebration of me hitting 10,000 subscribers, which I'm like so thankful for and I can't believe I'm actually almost at 11,000 subscribers at the time of me filming this video. I just literally cannot believe that so many of you guys like follow me and support me and watch all my videos. <laughs> it's crazy to think that 11,000 of you are like around and watching what I do in my life because I don't feel like it's that cool or that important. But I asked for you guys to drop questions on multiple different platforms. I did it on Facebook, on YouTube community, and also I think on Instagram. And so I'm gonna go through and we're gonna talk about like the questions and stuff. Hopefully I can get through all of them. I'm not sure how long this video is gonna be, but I'll try and go kind of fast, I guess. Okay, first question is from Barbara and she said how do you juggle work both channels and home life and still be so upbeat and happy you're an inspiration thank you um I like honestly I don't know I think it's because I'm a hard worker in general my mom always taught me to work hard and you always like work before play and so that's just how I grew up with that very strong work ethic it is challenging like I'm not gonna lie it's very challenging to do two channels but I wouldn't ever want to get rid of any of them. So I feel like because I'm passionate about them, I want to put in the work. It doesn't seem like work because I'm actually enjoying what I'm doing. Now with my actual job, that is a little bit harder. I did drop down to part-time because last year when I was full-time, that was, I was very, very stressed. Like before COVID hit and before quarantine, I was kind of like on the verge of tears just because I was so stressed trying to get everything done. And I'm also like a perfectionist, so it's hard Hard for me to like let things slide um, but I am glad that I'm working just part-time at my actual job um, and soon I won't have to drive an hour to work so that will save me some time too okay next question is from Katie if you could walk in the life of a celebrity alive or dead for one day who would it be and why <laughs> okay so I'm gonna pick Taylor Swift because I love Taylor Swift like she is one of my favorite celebrities um, I, I mean I already know that I wouldn't want her life so thankfully i only would have to walk like in the life for one day because there's no way like i i mean i can sing but i don't like doing things in front of people i get like anxious and nervous and there's no way that i would be able to like perform or anything but it would just be really cool to see like how her day actually is and that's the only reason why okay so i actually got a couple different questions about foster care cameron said how has the dynamic changed since you got your foster child and if you didn't know we actually got a foster placement a couple weeks ago but he was only with us for one week um he did have some problems that we weren't aware of at the time that we said yes to him and we only found out a couple days after having him and so they did find a different family that was able to kind of be like a better support for his needs and stuff. Um, but that dynamic had totally changed. Like when we had him in our house, my life was not the same at all. Like I couldn't even take a shower. That's how different it was. Uh, my friend Gwen asked my favorite curly girl products. And um, I only have a couple because I try not to get overwhelmed with products. Um, I do really like the Shea Moisture shampoo and conditioner. I will like try and post a little picture here or whatever. Um, I do use those. And then I love the Not Your Mother's gel that has been working for me. I also use the curling cream, which is what I did in my hair today. So I don't have any gel. It's just the curling cream. And then I recently picked up this shampoo and conditioner that I've been actually really liking too, because it has a little bit less like butters and oils. My hair is very fine. And if I have too much like butters and oils, it can like make it really heavy. I also really love my wet brush. Gwen also asked, what's something you're looking forward to in 2021? I am definitely looking forward to my new house. Like we're moving December 5th and I cannot wait to live in that house in 2021. It's gonna be so great. I'm excited for all the videos I'm gonna film there, all the extra time I'm gonna have for not driving to work. Um, I got a bike and I'll be able to ride around the new town that we're moving to. Like that's what I think I'm most excited for. My friend Missy said, 
What's something you've learned to love about yourself in the last year? <laughs> oh, we're, we're diving in deep, everybody. Um, okay, so I do struggle with always wanting to lose weight because I have been like fat shamed a lot before and I just don't feel very comfortable. Um, I, I have a lot of fat like around my belly and people will always ask me if I'm pregnant. And so I think that like I am at a lot higher weight than I've been the last couple years, um, but I've been trying to like embrace it instead of like hating my body for it. I've been trying to embrace just like being a little bit bigger and that being okay and I can still look beautiful and be attractive to my husband and myself like even with being a higher weight the weight doesn't dictate who i am and so i mean i'm still working on that obviously but that's what i'm trying to learn to love about myself i guess i don't know if i've actually learned to love it completely yet <laughs> My friend Brittany said, what was your homeschool experience like? What you liked about it and what you disliked about it? So my homeschool experience I think was a little bit better than some other people that might've been homeschooled. Like my family is pretty like conservative, but not as conservative as a lot of other homeschoolers. Like we didn't have to wear dresses or skirts or anything like that. Um, I did do a lot of my school by myself when I was in like high school. Um, so it's not like my mom was doing everything for me. I did really enjoy um, some of my subjects. Like I loved all the reading that I got to do because I've been, always been a big reader. I would say the things that I dislike about it is the fact that I'm someone that I love having a lot of hobbies. And I, I mean, I had some hobbies uh, growing up, but without going to actual like public school or without living in a town where homeschoolers could go to the school and do some of the extracurricular activities, I feel like I missed out a little bit on some of those like extracurriculars. So, I mean, I'm not a sports person, but like, you know, even learning like photography or being part of yearbook or just anything like that, like band, there's just so many things like that that I feel like would have been kind of cool, I guess, I know that some people that are homeschooled do get to do things like that or if you're part of like a homeschool group um, which we weren't really part of for most of my life but yeah I do have a very positive like outlook from my homeschooling experience and I want to homeschool my own kids so hopefully that answers your question. This is from my sister-in-law Lindsay and she said who's your favorite sister-in-law? Oh my gosh that is way too hard because currently I have two sister-in-laws. Lindsay, which is Alvin's sister, so my husband's sister, and then I have Emma, who is my brother Brody, his wife. And I cannot pick a favorite, I'm sorry. I like you both equally and in different ways, okay? Like we're not gonna, we're not, the family's gonna come after me now, okay. My friend Hannah said, what's something that's on your Christmas wish list that's not book related? Ooh, okay. Um, so <laughs> I'm gonna say the thing that I actually wanted my husband to do or get for me for Christmas and I really wanted to get my car detailed. Like that shouldn't really come as a surprise I feel like because I am like I'm really clean, I'm a minimalist and I love like things organized and all that kind of stuff and all I wanted for Christmas was literally to spend the couple hundred dollars it takes to like get my car like all the seats shampooed and everything like completely detailed and like nice and like sparkling. I mean my car isn't it's not new um but it's also not like an like it doesn't look like an old car i think it's like seven or eight years old and i bought it new um but like i want it to like kind of be like a new car again you know but i don't know if i'm going to be able to do that because we're buying a house so i'm actually getting a house for christmas which i guess is even better all right my friend melissa said how much time does it take to create content for your channels and podcast how much time do you dedicate to maintaining a social media presence and favorite thing about living in virginia wow Okay, so um, how much time does it take to create content for channels and podcasts? Well, for the podcast, I actually, like, it is a friendship podcast with my friend Gwen and she actually does the majority of the work with coming up with the content. So thankfully I don't have to do that because my brain is already overloaded with coming up with content for my other like channels and stuff. And so I do most of the editing and like behind the scenes work for editing and you know like posting it and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then Gwen actually does all of the brainstorming which is great because she just like writes up all the stuff and I just have to put my like comments like 
you know, the books that I'm going to talk about. Now for my other, like for my channels, I don't spend that much time. Like I don't have like a content calendar, even though I have been thinking about do, like starting one for 2021. I pretty much just like either I am thinking things throughout the month and I have this like big spread in my bullet journal where I just have a list of like ongoing topics that I want to do or talk about. And then when it comes to actually like filming the video, I like do no planning, which is weird because I'm like such a planner and organized person, but I kind of just do things on a whim. Like I don't sit down and script my videos. I don't really, sometimes I even just all of a sudden, five minutes from now, I'll be like, you know what? I'm gonna film this video and I just do it. So I guess I don't spend that much time. It does take a lot of time though to maintain that social media presence. It's really hard for me to be active on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and now you have like reels and stories and TikTok, and there's just so many different things. So you kind of have to pick and choose like what your top ones are. And YouTube is definitely a top one. So I usually try and do YouTube the most and then Instagram as like second, but I'm not very good with like Instagram stories. I have never done an Instagram reel and I've only made one TikTok video like in my life. And I don't know, like it's just really hard to work other jobs and do hobbies and do other things and be a big presence on like all other forms of social media. Okay, the sun is starting to come this way, so we're gonna move. I forgot, favorite thing about living in Virginia? I don't know, I don't really have anything particular that I like about Virginia. I was actually born in Pennsylvania um, and I do really like Pennsylvania, um, but, and that's like where my family and stuff lives, but Virginia, I mean, I really do like the mountains, especially this year. I was trying to appreciate like the mountains and the scenery and how beautiful the state is. So I guess I'll say that. Ooh, you know what? No, I'm going to say the wine. There's a lot of wineries here and I really like that about Virginia. Okay. My friend Ellie said, if you could have any pet domestic or not, what would it be? That would be nothing. I am not a pet person, actually. Uh, our like dog, Graham, that's actually Alvin's dog, technically. Like We got him when we were married, but Alvin was the one that really wanted a pug. And so it's definitely more Alvin's dog than mine because I'm just not a pet person. Ellie also asked, how did you get into reading? Did you always love reading? Any standout reading memories? Favorite childhood book? What inspired you to do the curly girl method? And what is your favorite dish or dishes to make? I hope you guys, you get any to sit in for the ride because we still have lots of other questions like go grab a glass of wine or something i'll wait while you get a snack and a drink because we're still going to be here for a while okay so let's keep going so how did i get into reading um i actually think that it was just because of being like homeschooled i guess i don't know because we did do a lot of reading in my homeschool but not all my siblings are into reading i think it's just something that i always enjoyed and i remember reading like my mom's old Nancy Drew books and I loved Nancy Drew. Like I've always been like a mystery thriller type of person. And so I guess I would say that those were some of my favorite childhood books. I also really liked the Babysitter's Club. Oh, I also loved the Elsie Dinsmore collection. Those were my favorite childhood books. I mean, I was probably about like 12 and 13 when I started reading those, but I loved those because it was, it actually is historical fiction, but it starts with this girl, Elsie, and she's, I think maybe like six or eight when the first book starts. And it like shows all of her growing up and like, her getting like courted and then her like marrying somebody and having kids and then her kids like growing up and having kids and it was just a really great series and I would totally reread that but I haven't been able to find it anywhere. I forgot about those. I was obsessed with that series. What inspired me to do the curly girl method? It was because my hair just like looked so damaged um this last year or so like i used to actually have kind of waves it never was this curly actually um but i did have nice waves i could just let my hair air dry and after getting that like really bad bleach job my hair totally changed i was just really dry and stringy so that's when i had started looking into the curly girl method and i was like you know what it's not gonna hurt for me to try this out and guess what guys it did not hurt for me to try this out i'm very happy with my hair and what is my favorite dish or dishes to make i actually love baking bread 
that is I think one of my favorite things is like baking desserts and baking bread I have always loved being a baker and so those are act I actually enjoy baking I think rather than cooking but if we're talking about cooking I would say that anything that's like comfort food like I love like mashed potatoes and meatloaf you know things like that I'm not one of those like upscale you know oh let's make the swirls on the plate or whatever type of person I'm more like all right here's your mushroom gravy and like you know country steak and stuff like that and I think it's also because that's like what my husband really enjoys eating and so he always gets really happy when I make those comfort foods oh my friend Jesse asked if there's gonna be Christmas book merch and yes I think there is definitely going to be I actually thought of an idea the other day I just haven't put it together yet so I'm hoping then that can come out very soon then my friend Megan said how has your experience been with your first foster placement is it what you expected I've always wanted to foster and definitely will once I'm old enough okay so I actually think I had a very terrible first foster experience um, I don't think that it's the normal but I haven't really been able to talk to the caseworkers yet to ask if it was normal but I actually feel like I didn't get a lot of support with the first child a lot of things were not communicated and told for us and it was just not that great of a situation and we felt very overwhelmed yeah so it was definitely not what I expected at all I feel like I'm somebody like I view myself as someone that can get through a lot of terrible situations like I'm a hard worker and I feel like somebody else struggling I could you know power through something like that and it was very hard for me to power through the week of having the foster placement and it's for like a bunch of different reasons I was just not prepared for like the aggression and some of the like destruction and stuff and neither was Alvin um, and so yeah like it really made us kind of like question what we're saying yes to and what we're okay with and I feel like that's totally okay that you need to be honest with yourself about what you can handle because um, you also want to make sure that those kids are being put into good hands and we just could not we like we didn't have the support that this little boy needed um and so I'm, I'm glad that he actually is in better hands my friend Karen said do you do book subscriptions and if so which ones I actually do not do book subscriptions and that's because well, the only one that I'm actually interested in is Book of the Month. Um, and the only reason I haven't done Book of the Month is because I'm part of like swap groups on Facebook and a lot of people swap their Book of the Month books. So if there's like an early release, a lot of times people are reading those really fast and then they wanna swap them anyway. And so I've actually been able to get some of the Book of the Month early releases literally just swapping one of my old books for them i'm also like i said a minimalist and so i unhaul all of my, well unhaul or swap all of the books that i've already read and so i actually don't spend like any money on books ever and that's one of the reasons why i don't do the subscriptions because i try and not spend any money on books throughout the year i love using my local library i do get sent arcs from publishers and then i also will swap my old books for new books that i want to read taylor said what do you love most about doing youtube do you see it being a full-time career in the future so i want it to be a full-time career in the future that is definitely my goal I don't know when that would be able to because it's it is really hard to kind of make that decision because of me working still part-time I don't have the full amount of time and capacity to like put everything into YouTube that I need to put into it to make it a full-time career so it definitely probably will still be like years down the road before it would ever be a full-time career but I do make a significant amount of money from it monthly which is a very good thing because I feel like I am like getting the enjoyment out of doing something hardworking. It's very, what should I say, disappointing maybe, or should I say like unmotivating to put in so much time and work and not really getting anything in return. And the things that I get in return, I feel like are you guys like actually commenting and watching the videos my favorite thing to do is to answer the comments and i still try and spend a lot of time to do that a lot of times like once you get pretty big like you just don't have the time because it does take hours for me to respond to all of the comments on both channels um, but that's like one of my favorite things to do I love when I ask a question and you guys actually answer it I love that you're watching I love when people actually like make one of my recipes and then tag me on Instagram or they read one of the books that I've recommended and they tag me and they say like 
thank you so much like Jackie for like you know telling me to read this or whatever those are some of the like coolest things it's crazy to think that like I can say something or do something and you guys are watching it listening to it taking my advice I love that but I also have always loved teaching I've, I've been a manager at my other jobs and my favorite thing to do was like manage and teach and I feel like with my YouTube channel like that's what I'm kind of doing like I'm either teaching about food I am sharing my experience of what I know I'm talking about books like I I love that and then the money is also a plus it really makes it worthwhile for me to spend the time to do this okay from my friend Renee, she said, how are you liking your Invisaligners? And I actually got rid of them, I think, like the second week I returned them. I was doing the Smile Direct Club and my, like, I don't know. I heard a lot of things about how people were suing the company because they were damaging people's jaws. And I actually have like the lock jaw syndrome. So I already felt scared of kind of doing them. But then also when I went to go put in my next week of aligners, they weren't fitting. Like they literally were not going onto my teeth. Um, and I just decided that like through all of that, I just returned them. And in the future, I would like to do something actually through my dentist because Smile Direct Club isn't actually like through your dentist. They don't really, they don't have experience. I don't know if I want to say experience, but like no one's really like checking to make sure that they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. So that is what happened with the aligners. The bookish Cessanoc said, I love how organized and put together you are. I was wondering if you had any tips for someone who struggles with that. I would definitely say that being a minimalist makes it a lot easier to be organized and to keep up with it. So if you're struggling with that, I think that starting to declutter and get rid of things is the actual correct first answer before you do anything else. Because when you're organizing all of your stuff, like you can organize all day long and you can hide things in cubbies and shelves and all that, but you're still just hiding stuff that you're not using. And I am a big believer in going through your stuff every six months to a year and getting rid of things that you haven't used in six months to a year. I do it with clothes. I do it with items. I literally do it. I do it with books even still. Um, and I either sell or I donate those items. You can sell them on Facebook marketplace. I actually have a video all about that here. Um, I also do yard sales and stuff. I mean, not during COVID, but before I did yard sales and you can make good money like from selling the stuff that you're not using. But I feel like that's how I stay the most organized because I will go through rooms every couple months and put together a pile of like things that we aren't using, things I can donate. And I do that constantly. I don't wait 10 years and then decide to do it because then it can be very overwhelming. Okay, Jada said, what are your favorite podcasts? <laughs> well, not to flex or anything, but Talk Bookish to Me podcast is my favorite. That's the one that my friend Gwen and I do together. It's all about books, what we're currently reading, what we're loving, reviews, all of that kind of stuff. You can definitely check it out. I will link it here and down here if I can. And other podcasts, I used to listen to Leanne Vogel's um, podcast. I think it was called Healthful Pursuit. I actually haven't listened to many podcasts recently though because I've been so busy listening to audiobooks. Oh, actually, there's a really good marriage podcast. I think it's called Hashtag Still Married. I'll like pop it up here or whatever. Um, but I was listening to that a lot during quarantine in the beginning of the summer and it is so good. My husband was listening to it too and I highly suggest listening to that. Okay, if you could tell your 17 year old self one thing, what would it be? It would be to start a YouTube channel then because I feel like it was definitely easier and I could have documented so much of my life back then. I would have loved that. I love documenting my life. I guess I could have put that in my, one of my favorite things about YouTube is the fact that like, I love doing vlogs. I love looking back at my vlogs and seeing just how I've changed as a person or just like how our life has changed in general. And that's like what I love the best, I think, because if I would have started a YouTube channel at 17, I would have had all those years documented, which is so cool. Like, I'm so jealous of the people that have been doing YouTube for so long and have like college and weddings and babies like all documented. How cool is that to look back on? 
Abby said, how have you navigated your fostering journey in terms of the placements you take? I have interest in becoming a foster parent, but feel like it would be difficult to decide what placements to accept. It is very, very difficult to figure out what placements you're gonna accept. And even us accepting ones did not turn out for us. So you're constantly, I feel like, updating and changing like what you're okay with. We've changed our age. We've changed other things that like we thought we could handle and then realized that we couldn't handle. Um, and so you really just have to be like really honest with yourself. And I don't think you're ever gonna get it perfect. Um, some things you might have to struggle through and then decide that it's not for you. Some things you might actually just decide you're gonna you know, try out on a whim and maybe you see that you can handle it. So that is a very hard thing and you just kind of have to start at your basics and then kind of like move it around and figure out. Laura said, how did the later part of your foster journey work? After you were approved, how did placement work and what was the process like? So after we were approved, like we've been sitting around for a while, like we've gotten many calls in, but we've said no to a lot of calls. And then we've also said yes to a fair amount, but we actually didn't get chosen because we do live far away from a lot of the placements that come in. Once we actually said yes to a placement, the only placement that we actually got was an emergency placement. And so I hear that those are different than regular placements. And so I said yes at like two in the afternoon. And then the placement came at 3.30 in the afternoon, like literally an hour and a half. And they quick like dropped him off, signed some paperwork that I didn't get to read. Um, and they were like, see ya bye. And that's like pretty much it. Um, and so I actually have some vlog footage from that placement, but because I like struggled so much later on in the week, I didn't know if I should post any of that content because um, I was like really excited when I was first getting the placement and then I like was very 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 just struggling and not in a great place like afterwards um, and so I'm still not sure if I'm going to edit that footage and put it together in kind of like a my experience type of video because I know that that doesn't happen to everybody and I don't want to deter people from being a foster parent um, but I also want to share my experience and you know where I'm coming from and everything so yeah, that is um, how our foster placement went. And um, yeah, it was, I, I don't think that that's the normal. Okay, I'm moving again because the sun just keeps shining in my eyeballs. From Natalie, favorite recipe to cook now that you've started to move away from keto? That is definitely sourdough bread recipes, like sourdough anything. I am in love with sourdough and it is so cool to like see all of the different recipes I can make from it. I've made sourdough bread, like actual artisan bread. I've made sourdough loaf bread. I've made sourdough pizza and sourdough pancakes and those, oh, and a sourdough skillet, like pie thing. Those are all really, really fun to make. Tammy said, if you wrote a thriller, what would it be about? Um, I honestly don't know because I, I don't ever want to be a writer. I feel like I can't write. I'm not good at writing, which is why I have a YouTube channel and not a blog <laughs> because I would not love to write things. Um, but I guess if it was a thriller, it would be probably about like, like some type of like married couple that's like cheating or doing crazy things or like swapping. I don't know. I feel like I love domestic thrillers the most. So it would probably be either that or it would be a thriller that has like, maybe like Stockholm, 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 Stockholm? How do you say that? Syndrome? It would have that or like Munchausen by proxy or you know anything like polygamy. I don't know, those are the things I love like reading about. Jada had asked how is fostering going and I know I talked about that and then Enial113 said, what is your all time favorite thing to make or eat for Thanksgiving slash Christmas? Okay, rolls, bread, I do love that. I'm actually gonna be making sourdough rolls for Thanksgiving um, and then I also love pies i love making pies i love eating pies so like any type of like fruit pie or pecan pie i also love bourbon balls those are really good i mean literally any i love green bean casserole like love making that yeah i think those are all of the things and then a coffee loving bookaholic said how do you balance your personal life work life booktube youtube hobbies husband and household do you have a specific time management schedule you follow and how do you prioritize everything you guys know i do a bullet journal and that has definitely i mean it comes 
comes in handy. I actually just got my new one for 2021. I'm so excited. So I'm going to do a whole like bullet journal setup for that. And I actually decided this year I'm going to use two bullet journals. Like I'm going to split the year into two. So I did use just one bullet journal for 2020, but I hardly have any pages left for December and I don't like that feeling. And so I'm going to have like one bullet journal for the first six months and then an another bullet journal for the second six months. So that way I feel like I can actually write down everything. I love keeping like foster placement information and calls and stuff like that in there and being able to look back on it. And so I use the bullet journal. I write out like to-do lists or things that I have to do I will prioritize things that I have to do. Like if I have to film and edit a video or make Alvin's lunch or dinner or whatever it is, like those are the things that I make sure that I get done. And then other things I kind of just like, I just push them off and procrastinate though until I actually have to do them. I do try and make myself stay to a schedule. And that's like with my YouTube channels, they haven't been as big of a priority at the moment just because we're in the middle of moving and a foster placement. But I love like first of the month, Monday, first of the year so like for 2021 I'm gonna be putting myself back on an actual schedule for YouTube and like sticking with it and I might even try creating like a content calendar or something but what works really well to being able for me to get all that stuff done is number one not being on my phone a lot either taking like a social detox day or using the forest app and just like planting trees so that way you're not on your phone and then you can actually get stuff done it's amazing how much stuff you can get done when you're not on your phone i also don't watch a lot of like tv and even though i love playing animal crossing i haven't been able to play in a while because i just don't have enough of the time and then with like reading books i've been trying to listen to a lot of audiobooks while I'm driving so that way I don't have to take time up reading at home when I need that time to clean the house or do laundry or edit a video film a video cook dinner all of that kind of stuff so yeah I mean I don't have kids it's definitely a lot harder like when you have kids it's easier for me to like clean the house because I keep it already clean and organized I don't have to like tidy up anything because I keep it tidied up all the time um so I I will say that like my cleaning I can literally clean the whole house in like an hour and then I do that once a week all of the other stuff it really is just like I'm just kind of like juggling it all the time I have tried like block scheduling before I have a video about like quarantining in a block schedule I think I'll link it here um and so that way I was able to put like okay from 9 to 11 in the morning I was going to run errands and then from like 11 to 12 I was gonna clean the house and then from I don't know one to three I was going to do my hobbies like reading and playing a video game and then from three to six I was going to do like my YouTube and editing and stuff and that really worked too but I, I wasn't able to do it once I started working again because my work schedule is just all over the place and that block scheduling does not work for that type of situation but when I'm home and like not working those types of schedules work really well for me okay you guys I think that's it I think we covered all of the questions so thank Thank you everyone for sending those in because this was a very successful Q&A video. Uh, this is way better than my 1K Q&A video. So I hope you guys really enjoyed it. And thank you again for supporting me and watching all my videos and just being amazing humans. I will see you guys very soon in another video. Bye. Bye.